Hello, and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. This time I'm reviewing something that I've never really reviewed in video before, and I've been meaning to get started reviewing. Anime. Okay, I've reviewed anime and prose on my blog and at Bureau42.com, but I'm doing a video review this time, as I'm taking a look at Seasons 1 and 2 of Hayate the Combat Butler. Hayate the Combat Butler has a seemingly complicated presence that pretty much gets itself out of the way after, the after a couple episodes, and just goes into absurdist comedic hijinks. Based on the manga by Kenjiro Hata, whose name I've mangled, the anime follows Hayate Ayasaki, a boy who would like to be an ordinary high school student, but unfortunately Hayate is the unluckiest person on the face of the earth. How unlucky is he? He has parents who like to spend every penny that comes into the house on gambling and booze. What money does come in to pay for food and rent comes through Hayate's hard work, as he's developed a skill not only at concealing his age, but also at doing pretty much any and every job that he can get in order to keep a roof over his head. Eventually, Hayate's parents decide to take a massive loan out from the Yakuza with their son as collateral and skip, da skip town. When the Yakuza disrupt collect, Hayate faces a choice. Get the money, one way or another, or the Yakuza will chop Hayate up for spare parts and sell them on the black market. I give Hayate's parents about a five on the Wormwood scale, which, with each point being equal to Matilda Ward. Wood's parents from the Moral Doll novel and film adaptation. While Matilda's parents were vile cheats, con artists, and general scum, they did at least have the one thing going for them that they were actually actively attempting to provide their children, kept a roof over their head, brought food on the table. They did not, however, attempt through action or inaction to act to kill their children, nor steal money from them, um, and basically require that their children handle all the providing. Hayate, in a fit of ethical compromise, tries to kidnap a lost girl in the hopes of holding her for ransom, which would in turn allow him to pay off his debt. Instead, the words that come out of his mouth end up becoming, if not exactly a confession of love, then at least a confession of emotional attachment. The girl in question, Nagi Sanzanin, ends up getting kidnapped by actual kidnappers, mind you, not competent kidnappers, but actual kidnappers, and then in turn getting rescued by Hayate. After things get cleared up, Nagi pays off Hayate's debt to the Yakuza, but in turn he has to work as her butler until his debt to her is paid off. And at that point, with the inception of some one-off stories, the issue of Hayate's debt rarely comes up again as the story instead proceeds into a handful of basic stories with general variations on the theme in the form of one-shot episodes or short story arcs. We have episodes based on brief moments where Hayati might be able to pay off his debt, usually through some absurd competitions. There are stories based around Hayate being sent on some mundane task and his bad luck getting in the way. We have stories based around your standard rom-com anime craziness, like White Day and Valentine's Day chocolates, and then there are stories about the absurd wealth of Nagi and her friends, and how they are totally ignorant or oblivious about the real world, or, for that matter, how much things actually cost for normal people, and what the value of a yen, or a hundred yen, actually is. So, if you've seen Ranma One Half at all, either recently or back in the day, this should be familiar with you. The only difference is, is that the story in Hat of the Combat Butler replaces a public high school and its myriad clubs, along with the Tendo family dojo like in Ranma One Half, with a swanky private high school and the trappings of the Sansanin's absurd level of wealth. Class-wise, the show takes the Oran High School host club tack of trying to have its cake and eat it too by making the lives of the 1%, or in this case, the point .00001%, look glamorous while also laughing at said rich schmucky mucks by pointing out how oblivious they are to how nice they have it, and also how isolated they are from real-world things like taking mass transit. Also, kind of differently from Marble One Half, this show has no problems whatsoever with breaking the fourth wall at every possible opportunity. Perhaps the best example of this is what the, related to the show's narrator, who was voiced 
in the Japanese dub by Norio Wakamoto. If you're unfamiliar with Wakamoto's work because you're more of a dub person, imagine the show narrated by a self-aware smartass played with all the ham of Brian Blessed. I can't really show clips for this because it's hard to illustrate a narrator as opposed to just play a narrator. Um, this leads me to the three problems I have with the show as it stands. One relates to the show itself, and two relate to the show's U.S. release. Firstly, the anime is significantly more fan service heavy than the manga is. It's not that the manga doesn't have fan service, but there it's closer to someone accidentally walking on someone else in the bath, and then actually doing something with the social awkwardness that comes with that situation. It's not just played for a one-off quick slapstick joke. There is additional humor and narrative purpose from the situation. The show, on the other hand, tends to fall more on the straight-up cheesecake side of things, and particular characters where they're kind of the young side, which is skeevy. The other problems are with the U.S. release. In short, if you're a dub-only person, whether it's because you have problems reading fast-paced dialogue with subtitles, or just reading subtitles doesn't appeal to you, you are out of luck, at least in the U.S. and Canada and Europe. The show has not gotten a dub release in the U.S. The only DVD release it got was by Bandai Entertainment back when it was in its Oh God, Oh God, We're Dying phase. So, it was a very, very bare-bones release. Um, actually, the Japanese release probably has more bonus features than the U.S. release. Um, however, the show is still available for streaming on Crunchyroll, who only does dubs for a select series. The shows, by which I mean currently Barani Kenshin. So, there's that. Um, additionally, well, if you want to get the DVD because you don't have high speed internet access near you, you are again kind of in trouble because Bandai Entertainment went from the oh god, oh god, we're going to die phase to the we're dead phase. So, the DVDs are out there, but they're probably going to be very expensive to get a hold of, and you're honestly certain to agree be better off streaming if you have high-speed internet connection. If you don't, then you're kind of out of luck. Though, if you don't have an high-speed internet connection, how are you watching my show? Anyway. There is was a English dub done in Australia, so you far, if you're there, you're in luck. I think the Australian dub even got a DVD release in Australia, so if you have a region-free DVD player and feel like importing DVDs from Australia, you are in luck. Or if you feel like hunting down torrents that have the Australian dub, you are in luck. But otherwise, not so much. Um, that said, I enjoyed this show. I had to the comment butler managed to do referential humor the right way, where... The reference itself isn't the joke, but the absurdity of the work and how the work is incorporated into the show is the joke. The show's cast has some really strong chemistry, and the characters are made very expressive by the animation, and for that matter, the animation gives the joke some punch that the manga, being in a stationary medium, lacks. Again, Hat to the Comet Butler Seasons 1 and 2 are available for streaming on Crunchyroll. There have been two subsequent seasons after those two, which... I'll get to it at a later, later time. There's also a movie as tie-in as well. Um, that has not been licensed at all. So, that is definitely a, for a, at a later time thing. The manga has currently been licensed in English for Viz, so that is available. Um, I'll definitely recommend checking out the manga as well, particularly if you enjoyed the show. The manga is actually further along than the anime, though the most recent season looks like they're going to skip a head over a bunch of stuff to catch up. Um, so, next time, well, term is over, so I will actually be able to hopefully get back to the, to the Nintendo Power Retrospective stuff. In the meantime, I also have some video games I can review, and get more movies to discuss. Until next time, if you enjoyed the show, please support my Patreon, link if you're on YouTube above, and below in the show notes and the URL in the credits. 
There's also a tip jar on the YouTube page if you'd rather just toss a bit of money my way rather than having a big recurring Patreon thing. Every little bit helps. It helps me upgrade my equipment, helps me get the show out more regularly. Just generally, it helps. And so until next time, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>